I'm Kevin Gu from Auburn University. This is a brief introduction to the subject of aisle design. This is joint work with Russ Meller at the University of Arkansas. Okay, let's talk about first uh, traditional warehouses. In particular, let's talk about your grandfather's warehouse. Basically all warehouses on the planet that we know of are built like this. Aisles are arranged, these are picking aisles in which there is product, let's suppose are arranged straight and parallel to one another in the space. This is also the design that you find at your local grocery store. In some cases, there will be a middle aisle that will look like this. This is called a cross aisle. And the cross aisle affords uh, better travel between locations inside the, the warehouse. For example, this location and this one. Obviously, to travel from here to here, I would use the cross aisle like this. Without the cross aisle, I would have to go up to the end, along the top, and then down. But if my goal is just to enter, for example, along the bottom, and travel to get one uh, get an item from one location, then this cross aisle does not give me any advantage at all. In fact, it actually is a disadvantage because half of the product, approximately, is moved just a little bit away from me. So typically, in warehouses where there is just um, what's called a single command cycle, where I go into the space, I get something and I come out, we won't find a middle aisle like this. So this research began by asking the question, why does it have to be like that? Why does this middle aisle have to be straight? And of course it doesn't, and as you'll see in just a moment, there's a considerable advantage to relaxing this assumption that this cross aisle has to be straight. So let's consider a, another design. Suppose we have our straight and parallel picking aisles again, just as before. But this time, instead of drawing a straight cross aisle across the middle, I'm going to form something we call a flying V cross aisle that looks roughly like this. Now, I've drawn it slightly curved because our models suggest that that's the best way to do it. If these were straight, you would get almost the same benefit. So this is a cross aisle again. And this is called the Flying Bee. In a Flying Bee warehouse, if travel begins from this location at the bottom, then I travel along the cross aisle and up to get to any location that's in this center region. To get to regions below the cross aisle, I use one of two travel paths. Either I travel, for those that are close to the bottom, I'll travel in the traditional way of along the bottom and then up to get the item. If uh, the item is slightly below the cross aisle, then I'll travel along the cross aisle, for example, and down. So there are three main travel paths. It turns out that this warehouse affords approximately a 10% advantage, that is a reduction in travel distance, expected travel distance, of about 10% over your grandfather's warehouse. But let me um, remind you of three main assumptions of this work before we get uh, too much further. The first one is that all travel begins and ends from this uh, single pickup and deposit point in the middle along the bottom of the warehouse. This might represent um, a, a stretch wrap machine or perhaps it could be a door if there were firewalls along this part of the warehouse. The second main assumption is uniform storage, which is to say that the probability of visiting every location in the warehouse is the same. And so we're not using something like turnover based storage or some intelligent slotting um, algorithm. If we do that, this uh, warehouse will confer almost the same advantage, but the numbers that I'm giving you here today uh, are just for uniform storage. And the third main assumption is single command cycles, which means I travel into the warehouse, I make a single pick, and then I come back out. Um, this is uh, different than dual command cycles where I might go out to make a stow, go to another location, in the warehouse to make a pick and then return to the pickup and deposit point. So all the research results I'm giving you today just uh, are for single command cycles. So you noticed before that I used the cross aisle here to visit locations above the cross aisle and slightly below, but those at the bottom here don't make any use of the cross aisle. And this led us actually to suggest a, a second um, design, which we call the fishbone warehouse, where I'm going to reorient these aisles here at the bottom. So in the fishbone I have the traditional or the, the same, not traditional, uh, the same 
diagonal cross aisles as before. Here's my pickup and deposit point along the bottom. My aisles in the center region are still vertical like this. And so travel to get these items is just as it was for the flying bee. But in these triangles along the bottom, I reorient the aisles to be horizontal like this. And that allows me then to use the cross aisle for accessing items in these bottom regions. For example, to get an item over here, I travel along the cross aisle and then uh, horizontally to the right. This warehouse, which we call the fishbone again, has an expected travel distance approximately 20% less than your grandfather's warehouse. We have uh, more results that we're working on and I encourage you to visit my website to have a peek at those. My website is www.kevingu.com. Thanks for listening.